G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve O here with another video and today I want to show you another Minecraft Made Simple episode talking about 2D uh, shift registers. Now previously we used a different D flip flop design to the one we're going to use this time so be aware of that. Uh, this design is a lot more compact and I think a little bit easier to understand. Um, I got this design, uh, the original, actually it's based off of a design by a guy um, named the Upa Dupa. Uh, loosely off of his design, I modified it to suit the situation, and yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about this design and things like that. Now, if you did watch the previous, if you didn't watch the previous one, there might be a few things that you may not understand. Things like the uh, the clock and the monostable circuit. If you don't know what they are or how they work, um, if you do, then you should be okay to just continue on this one, as I'll cover probably a lot of the same sort of things. But if there is any questions about things that you didn't quite understand, um, make sure you check out that one, and yeah. Anyway, let's move on. So, yeah, this is our new new design. Now, there's two types of input we can put into this. I've got a, um, an incrementable input, which goes in like so. But we can also, let's have a reset one, um, put an input in through here. So, like, if I was to, okay, blue, put an input from here. I would put a repeater and some redstone. Actually, I'll put two redstone. And I could put an input in that way. So, as you can see, it's off. Shall I go past the clock because I don't want to, while it's not on, trigger it or something. And uh, you can put in values that way. And that there is our output. So, you can have an output and an input um, on either side of it. So, it works nicely with a bus system. You can just like put it. Um, bang squ uh, square into a, a bus and it works nicely. And this the blue side here um, works best as an input only because the repeater would be hard to replace uh, in the reverse. But yeah, let's move on. So we've got a value in there now. We put it, we can put it in there from here or from our bus or whatever. But now yeah, let's, let's uh, play with it. Red sends values away from us. Blue sends values towards us. This one triggers which direction the clock is travel is um, is moving, so we can have the value automatically moving that way or towards us. Currently, it's set on red. Uh, you can tell by the redstone down there that it's coming towards us. And this one is to turn on the clock. So let's uh, let's manually play with it. Let me try and get to an angle where you can see everything. And yeah, well, not everything because you can't see everything in action, but enough to know what's going on. You can see the redstone traveling. And let's press it one more time. Now let's change the direction. Actually, let's put it on the clock and we'll turn it on. So we have this value now moving towards us automatically. There's two pistons extending, you might, un might see. But that's just for uh, convenience sake with the redstone. Let's change the direction. Shaboom! <laughs> Pretty mad, huh? Might just let it uh, serial out by going beyond the limits. Now you can add a loop function, it's probably just a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but if anyone is interested in a loop function, I'll probably um, post pictures or something, or give people a download to look at, or I don't know, something. I'm not, I wasn't planning on making it part of the video, so I'm not prepared to play around with it, and it probably look a bit messy. So, I mean, I could, actually probably would quite easily work, but yeah, I just don't want to work with it right now. Let's turn off the clock. And that'll work. Now let's explain how everything works. Let's place that redstone on there. So we have here, this is our D flip flop. The D flip flop design is almost a geometric shape, like if we had a block there and it, if it finished kind of here ish, and uh, we would have had a nice looking star almost thing. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't meant to be. So basically, the D flip flop, let's uh, reset the value. Um, stays there because it's kind of like a overload sort of a setup. Um, this piston, uh, sorry, not this piston, this repeater goes into that block which powers that redstone, which powers that redstone, that one, and goes back into itself. So it's a constant loop where the value will continue to go around and there's no end to it. So pretty much um, that's how it stays there. Now the value is reset um, by the piston above. So, like, if I was to, if we, when the um, the values are, are to transition, 
um, the valley will both go there and the piston will come down to block off the signal to turn it off from either side as long as it interrupts the flow of this part here um, it's all good <laughs> so yeah so pretty much you've got like for example you might be wondering why it isn't just doing that why because of the uh, the torch there being on why the value isn't just going to the next point the reason for that is because of the clock the clock is the only thing stopping it from going to the next value so like if we had a clock if you yeah we had the clock on which it it's <laughs> it is by default actually um, that stays off the clocks are on by default so when they're activated they actually turn off for a brief pulse and that's how they work so yeah that's how the values transition though so when the uh, the clock turns off um, depending on which which clock turns off determines which direction so if um, both clocks were to turn off at the same time the direct it would probably go both directions at the same time so that'd be pretty interesting actually um, I haven't tested that but it'd be an interesting concept to watch so if you had for example the value here uh, on theoretically speaking uh, if you had both directions on it would probably go that way and that way to, uh, if they would, the clocks would turn on the exact same time so yeah um, also uh, not only that, but if the clocks continued to stay on, um, you'd continue to have splits, so you'd probably end up having an overload because this one would go that way and that way, but then on the next tick, that one would go that way and that way, and the other one would go, you know, same thing, so it, it would be interesting. So, yeah, you have one turn on and and one stay off sort of thing. Well, it on, I guess, is the default. But yeah, now let's talk a little bit about how to make it. So you hopefully you understand now a little bit about the concept of how it works. Let's talk about how to make it. So we've got here uh, a basic star almost pattern. Well, actually, not even that. I don't. I don't even know what kind of pattern this would be. It's like a um, a weird-looking E thing. If you had another row on top, it'd be like an E, but it's not even that. So yeah, you've got kind of like a cross thing with a block on top and then two side blocks. So I don't know. That's the, about the only shape I could deduct it to. Deduct it to. So a repeater on two ticks repeater there and a repeater there with a redstone all over the top now you notice also here there's a zigzag sort of a pattern going in both directions these um, interlock perfectly with the previous system um, this repeater goes into a block which is which has a torch another block with another torch and another block on there so, redstone on top of there, a block on top of there, and that can also that that there is our an output or input, as you notice, on, is the same over here, output or input. So this would be connected like so, or like so, coming out like that. Although you wouldn't have a torch or something underneath it or anything like that. So. Well, then again, with the monostable circuit, it wouldn't be an issue. But also make sure that if you are going to do it this way, try to make the um, the delay along the clock about the same. Otherwise, you might run into issues with um, things transferring if you do it like a larger one sort of thing. Anyway, let's move on and keep going. So, like I said, with the clock, how it's the only thing keeping this thing running, uh, we want to move this back probably. <laughs> Actually, I might put the torch there and put the button there. So we put the yeah power that block and power yeah we've already done it on this side. No, we haven't. So this one would go up and go this way. So torch, 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 and a little bit different to the other side. We place a block here on the other side, but place our dust there. Um, our piston cutoff, we'll put a block there. Just goes on top of that block. So whichever dust on either side goes on, um, it's going to activate two pistons, unless it's at the end. And yeah, the reason for that is just to compact the redstone and because it doesn't really affect it. So yeah, let's um, move our button. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> that was great. <sighs> so put our talk button on there. And we're we're good to go. So let's continue. Um also like we said there's a torch on there. So that uh on this side is a little bit different. We have it alternating. So sometimes when the torch goes up, the value goes up and like that. The next time it will go from behind, so the block goes against there. And because that block there is powered, it will power the redstone here, which will go up in a stair pattern, like there, there, and those two. The next one goes back to the previous system, so there, there, and there. Then the stair pattern again. This one goes back to this pattern, so we put a block on here, and a block on there. Then we just make our... Our uh, <laughs> piston with a red block. We're color coding it uh, to mostly um, keep an understanding of which value it is and things like that because I don't want there to be confusion. And that block there basically stops any cross transmission, as you can see. So it makes so it keeps those wires separate. That torch, when it's on, for the brief moment it's on, for the duration of the um, this turning off, will come up through that block to power that and power that piston and that's basically how you transfer from either direction and how the D flip flop resets. So let's put a value in there. We can manually increment it because we've got the uh, essentials to do so. so. We'll send it away from us. Whoops. Oh, because we don't have it, because we don't have the delay that's on this monostable circuit um, the delays on these aren't set the same. So when I press it again, it will go to the last one. <laughs> Just because it's a little bit too much for us delay. Um, but you kind of, you can see it working at least. So that monostable circuit is very important because it only, um, sends through, it only has a five tick thing in the middle there. Um, which is very important. And you can play with it a little bit more to see just how fragile it is. You have to have it just right. And let's reset it. There we go. So, yeah, that's the basic concept. Um, like I said, our outputs and inputs come off of uh, these blocks. So this, this block here underneath each piston, put a repeater going into it. Mostly because it's easier to um, extend a piston from... Um, uh, not a piston. It's, it's a lot easier to have a repeater going into it from here, mostly because that it's standing above it, it's hard to place a repeater um, in going in the right direction without breaking the piston. So, like I said, this goes well onto a bus because you can just have the bus continue sort of thing. And yeah, it, it works nicely. It's a little offside sort of thing you can have connected to a bus, um, which doesn't really affect the system too much. Like you can have all eight lines going for wherever they're coming from and then these are our outputs. But yeah, I hope you guys have understood this. I hope this has been useful. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I've covered everything. Let me just... Uh, if I haven't, I'll, uh, I'll probably make another video and delete this one. <laughs> as I've done a number of times tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and if you have any other suggestions for me, uh, let me know. Let me make a daytime again. Because it's awesome. Um, but like I said, eventually, I might have said this in the previous one, I'll have this world up for download eventually when I've finished uh, doing all the advanced tutorials. So like I'll do things like uh, full adders and ALUs and things like that and hopefully I'll make them a bit simpler. And I'll have this world up for download for people to uh, download and play with and, um, and learn for themselves. But I do appreciate you guys and your support, so... Um, yeah, keep it up, guys. You guys are awesome. And I'll catch you next time. All right. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah.